Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, so Paul, 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 Paul said instead instead of taking responsibility for their feelings, they they try and make you feel guilty for how they feel. Exactly. Like, what are you? They want you. They try to make you feel bad. Like you, no. They 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 come at you all type of ways. They when they go they gonna insult you. They are gonna try to make you seem stupid. Then they're going to try to make it seem like you don't know what you're talking about. They ain't going to try to make it seem like you don't have a life. And they're going to try to make it seem like, you know, that like, you know, like you just down bad and, you know, this you you have nothing else. Come on, man. Come on. Just because y'all are wrong. Huh? Yeah, that's why. Hey, say, yeah, that's what you stuff like that. Okay, well, they don't want you to the business. I don't want you to the okay, cool. uh, yeah, this this the this the last last poll I'm gonna do because I'm looking at the chat while we while we go over this too. Uh, and, and Blackbird asked me, may I ask you if you're if you're new? Uh, I would consider myself new because I started this pretty much last last year at the end of last year. Sometime, you know, I just went out there and started doing it. I didn't. You know, I, I, I did watch videos before to get an idea, but, you know, I just got out there. That's not how it really is. Thank you, Karen. No. I'll give you five seconds. I think you can find a nice one. They just don't want you to up anymore. Okay. They don't have the authority coming up either. They said you're asking for money and stuff like that. What is it? Here's that. Huh? It's here's that. That. I say I'm not asking for money. Okay, well, they said you're a friend. So can you just go somewhere else? Why? Because I'm not going somewhere. i put in my heart to stand right here. I'm going to stand right here. Okay, but they don't want you blocking the sidewalk and stuff. I'm not blocking the sidewalk. Okay, give your idea on uh, I don't have any idea on this. Okay. And if I do, I want to give it to you. Anymore. All right, well, you need to just move along. That's all they want you to do. Nope, not happening. Why? Because you're just saying that about someone's friends. Okay, yeah, you have the right to do that. Huh. They just don't want you to return mm. your business. I mean, is there a reason? Is there a reason why you're up here? Stop putting my heart. Because, he just told uh, you. There's a reason why you're in front of this business. Stop putting my heart. Saying he just told you. They don't like that reason. <laughs> if they don't like the reason, they're just gonna keep asking you over and over again. He said, "God put it in my heart to stand here. Why are you here? God put it in my heart to stand here. Why are you here? God put it in my heart to stand here." <laughs> well, is there a reason why you're in this business? Uh, not, not particularly this business. I'm just on the public sidewalk. Okay, and you're not asking for money? I am not asking. I don't, okay, your sign doesn't say it, so I don't know. So um, you don't know? I mean, have you asked anybody for money? I mean, I'll yeah. tell you, my name is Jeff. What, what's your name? Uh, Officer Galt. Officer Galt. Galt. Uh, one thing I noticed is that... Um, Galt, G-A-L-T. G-A-L-T. Never mind. And you haven't asked for money. Anymore. The algorithm uh, is going to y'all. Y'all like the video? Like the video? All right. Can you get your personal last name real quick? Uh, my first name is Jeff, and I'm not a manager. That was nice enough. He didn't even have to say that. I mean, you're making this more complicated than it has to be. No, I'm not. I'm standing here in the sidewalk, saying God bless him, but you Causing, are you talking to any of these customers? Yeah, I'm saying that about the Okay, well, if they don't want you talking to them, you can, you can keep saying the thing. Look at him. He's just. Okay, well, they just want you to move along, so can you get him? Move along for me? Yes, they just want you to move along, so can you just move along for me? Uh, and he kept just trying to find ways to appease, you know, appease, appease their feelings and trample on his rights. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to put my heart in here. I'm going to say that. I didn't know you guys have body cams. Yes. Every agency has body cam with them. Next recording. Okay, that body cam. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm just going to stay here. Say God bless all the veterans. I'm not, not hurting anybody. I'm not causing anybody any trouble. I'm just saying God bless all the veterans. Okay, but he doesn't like it. I'm on the public sidewalk. He doesn't have any authority. Okay, well, you can't be asking me for money and stuff like that. I'm not saying you were. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that's what they told us. Even if I was asking useless. You, useless. Useless. Okay, well, that's useless directives. Oh, you can't be asking. I'm not asking for money. 
you can't be asking for money. I'm not asking for money. You can't be asking for money. I'm not asking for money. You can't be asking for money. I'm not asking for money. Like, I, it's so crazy, but y'all gonna see. Y'all gonna see. Even if he was asking for money, that's not illegal. That's the same thing. Oh, I'm not done with you yet. What are you talking about? No. Yeah. You got, you got gold. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you for money? Yeah. He's saying he's saying he's doing his political job about America. So he's on his public side of the He doesn't know him. Um, one of my one of my at another location. Um, I've never seen him for two years. I've had a couple of customers completely. He asked me to go on the street and do that. I just started. I got to talk to him. He's saying he's on his public side of the office. I'm not asking him for money. He's saying God bless. He was on our side, on our side of the sidewalk. Our sidewalk. Our sidewalk. Our our side of the sidewalk. What are you talking about? Sidewalk. I'd rather him. He's recording me. I'm recording. This is going to be. I mean, the only one identified. So that's not right. Steve was saying. I didn't, I didn't want to waste your time for this. Yeah. Like, uh, yes, you yes, did. Yes, you did. Maybe the PA, you know, like that's what you're scouting out. Yeah. Maybe you start over here. Uh, one more journey now for the road company. This dude's being, uh, you didn't want to waste your time because you called him. Hey, what's up, guy? I appreciate it. And stuff like that. <laughs> oh, hold on. Y'all see how you breeze by that and stuff like that. He has to he has a constitutional right and stuff like that. What? I wouldn't say it's a separate answer, and I checked this out. Like it's something that needs to be one thing. Both sides say God bless America. So actually, if he's saying home is best, my job partner is Mandarin. So if you want to talk about that, we should talk about that. So I'll see what we can do. Okay. Hopefully, you can be wrong. I mean, even the woman's not the problem. Like if you don't trespass, which he was, now, now, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, like, I don't be in trouble or like, I just don't want my customers to be. Like, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, she's scared to leave. She's scared to leave. That's what you're saying. I'll try to get rid of the problem. I'm not going to go. You can answer. Nanny tried to use the OC scare. Yeah, the what? The man said, God bless all of this. Okay. Well, can you just move on? I told you what you do. I'm having no more. God, I put my heart to stand here and say this, and it's from the same. Okay. Well, they don't want you in front of the business. If you were you were on their sidewalk? I've been. No, with the, I'm, what is their sidewalk? I'm not answering for the question. Okay. Okay. Well, he talking about these, these over here. Under this, on it, I still believe that's public. I'm not 100% sure, but I still think that's public. Y'all tell me if if that's still public. I think it is. I don't think they can have a, I don't think they can own any part of the sidewalk. I think they're, what they own stops at the, the glass window <laughs> and, and inside the restaurant. Yeah, he, he said you were on the property. On the property. Business owner wouldn't be lying yeah. about that. Okay. He wouldn't lie about it, but he might be incorrect or misinformed about where his property line against him. Okay, so it's my word against his. It's just your say. I've been standing right here the whole time. So God bless him. Okay. Okay. They move just to move along. Move along. All right. So I'm I'm not going. We're gonna we're gonna go to this part because y'all y'all already know how it's gonna go. 
I, I want y'all to see. I Later want y'all to see. 24th, 2021. This part. And the time is 7.03 p.m. The location of this interview is the command staff conference room at the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. Presently being interviewed is Sergeant Richard Kirkland. I am Lieutenant Mark Severance with the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. And are you aware this interview is being recorded? I am. As Florida law enforcement officer and notary public of the state of Florida, I'm empowered to take sworn statements. At this time, I'd ask you to raise your right hand to be sworn, please. You solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You are being interviewed as a witness to an internal affairs investigation. Since you are not the focus of the investigation, neither union representation or an attorney need be present to represent you. You are required to answer all questions pertaining to your actions or knowledge obtained while an employee of the City of New Smyrna Beach Police Department. Failure to answer any questions may subject you to departmental charges. If any time during this interview you feel that your answers might result hey, in what's up, action Gallagher? being taken against you, so advise me and the interview will be stopped until representation is obtained. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. So on December 14th, There was a cab call used to respond to 143 Canal Street in reference to a suspicious person. Are you familiar with that call? I am. Were you working as a Bravo shift supervisor that evening? I was. So you were filling in for another supervisor, yes, correct? Yes, I was on overtime, correct. Mm -hmm. Can you recall the details or circumstances of that suspicious person call? Yes, I do. What were they? Um, the, the suspicious person call came out, uh, was dispatched to call um about a male bothering customers uh, and asking for money um the then i mean i don't know how far you want to go go responds and uh i mean that's the circumstance okay that's all we know as far as the call goes okay so to you it was pretty nondescript just a a, a person correct uh, bothering customers yes okay uh were you ever contacted by officer golf or officer yeah. Beatty during the time frame of this call Scalzo, man. Um, i was contacted by officer Beatty after the call for service not during it um the they the subject uh had already left the scene um by the time he called me but yes okay so you had no knowledge of, of what was going on at the scene at the time when either officer galt was there or officer Beatty was there correct yeah i thought so, it was just a suspicious person they were going to move along or, you know, okay so uh officer you said officer Beatty calls you you believe at the end of his interaction correct with this person yes yeah so before <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you describe the phone conversation that you had with Officer I don't even need to say nothing. Um, yeah, he said uh, that he was just calling to inform me about what happened. Uh, he said that he was uh, handling a can handler call. Uh, so obviously, immediately I was kind of thinking, you know, what do you mean by can handler call? Um, he says that the subject was standing on city property uh, and had a sign uh, that said, uh, God bless homeless veterans. Um, he said that the he the man was refusing to identify himself and that um he had a firearm mm -hmm. and then he and he did have a valid uh concealed weapons permit um i asked him you know what happened he explains to me that basically he and all right i put the speed up a little bit faster y'all let me know y'all let me know if it's going too fast for y'all i usually watch videos at two x the speed so it's like for me it's like he talking real real slow Called detained the, the male with handcuffs. Um, they disarmed him uh, and come to and confirmed that he had a, a valid concealed weapons permit, and that in doing so they were able to identify him. Uh, and ultimately, they let him go. Um, I asked BD why he was detained, uh, and he told me that he was detained because he was refusing to identify himself. And I said, "Well, for what crime are you investigating?" And he said that he was investigating panhandling. And I, he said, "It's against city ordinance." And I said, "I told him no, it's not against city ordinance." Uh, yeah. And he said, "Well, it's against state statute as well." And I said, "It's, it's not against state statute." And um, I told him, "I said that, that from what you're telling me, it sounds like you had no legal authority to seize the gentleman or his uh, firearm." Excellent. That was excellent, Sergeant. Uh, Disarm him, even run his name. Uh, doesn't sound like anything wrong. What was Beatty's reaction to that on the phone? He seems kind of like, like taken back, like kind of shocked. Like he he didn't. I don't think he grasped that. Was yeah, we know on, he messed up. Uh, that it was not illegal. I think he truly thought it was illegal and uh, was kind of stammering for a second. And then um, at, at one point, he hold on one second. Let me refer to the report here. I forget he did say something. Um, oh, he did. Yeah, he, he did try to tell me that um, that he didn't tell him about the concealed weapons permit. At the same time, he told him about the gun. So he tried to. He was basically trying to paint the picture that well, he told me he had a gun, so I was just going to to seize the gun and make it more of an officer safety thing and i told him that's that that, that that still does not work if you don't have a crime you investigate you can't see the person um and right. it ultimately <laughs> turned out the guy did tell him 
and so on for minutes. Okay, are you aware of the duration of this interaction uh, call? Well, the call came out at 1927 hours, and I got the phone call at 1957, so literally right at a half hour. Okay. Uh, from the time dispatch to the time BDC was calling me, so I would say shorter, maybe 20 minutes. Or five minutes okay. Uh, obviously, uh, since you were there, you don't have a lot of details as to what happened uh, based on the phone call that you got from Beatty, uh, other than what he told you. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Now, obviously, after the fact, I met with you, uh, you being the supervisor that night, and asked you to conduct a supervisory inquiry. That was on the following day, uh, December 15th. Uh, and you entered your findings into an incident summary and submitted it for further review. Uh, can you provide a synopsis of the key findings in that document and uh, walk us through what happened? Sure. Um, so the ultimate findings uh, are that the gentleman was not creating a crime or was not committing a crime. He was completely within his rights. He was on a public sidewalk. He was simply only assigned saying, God bless him. Wasn't doing anything illegal or suspicious for that matter. Uh, and they, they did not have a right to detain him, to seize him, his property. Or, or anything. That, that was my ultimate findings. Uh, the way I got to those findings is I reviewed uh, all the video Gee. that was reported by the subject and posted to uh, social media. I also reviewed the uh, both body-worn cameras from Officer Galt and Officer Beatty. Um, essentially, Officer Galt gets on scene first. Uh, he goes to make contact with the male. He tries to summon the male over to him. Uh, the male didn't really appear to respond. Uh, so he approaches the male and mm -hmm. they have a brief inter interchange where, where Officer Galt basically tries to get him to move along and uh, tries to give him some, the, the male challenges him and says, I don't have to move along. Um, uh, I don't know if you want me to get into exact words and stuff, or you just want me to kind of give the... No, the did, uh, did Officer Gold uh, make contact with the business owner or the manager? Not until after he had this, you know, verbal kind of back and forth with the, the subject. Uh, I, I believe that he thought he was just going to walk up to the subject and ask him to move along, as we do on a lot of calls, and if the guy doesn't have a problem with it, moves along, no harm, no fact. Yeah. So on a lot of calls, we just, most people don't know they're right, so they just move right along because they think we're right, so they just listen to us, and, you know, it's usually not a big deal. Oh, well, in this case, the, the gentleman says, I have a right to be here. I'm not going to. So you can see Gall kind of is taken back a little bit. And he said, okay, well, let me go in and talk to the manager. So he does go in and talk to the bar staff. Um, the He tells him the guy says that. Uh, Stevenson, is absolutely. He's not going to move and that, you know, he's on the sidewalk. Um, I believe the bar manager tells him, well, he was on our property. And, you know, so, so there was some dispute over what was their property, what was public property. Correct. It, it appeared from watching the video that the bar manager, uh, the reporting party, that I believe his name is Axel, uh, thought that the entire sidewalk belonged to- He didn't think that. Um, it, it clearly he didn't think that. Sidewalk. And the subject was actually standing on the far, the farthest away on the sidewalk he could be from the business. He was literally up by where the parallel park is. Okay, let's back up for a minute. Mm. Uh, in your review of the body-worn camera videos and the YouTube video, uh, primarily the YouTube video before our officers arrived, uh, did you see the RP Axel speak with uh, this subject? Yes, he he goes, he initially tries to kill his own so he goes out and, you know, asks him to move along, tells him he can't be there. Uh, and of course the, the gentleman says that he can, he does have, has a right to be there, he's on a public sidewalk. Um, the actual guy kind of challenges him and says, no, this is our sidewalk. So no, it's not. And basically when he meets the resistance, Axel says, well, fine, I'll just have to call the police. And so he went back to the bar. Okay, that brings us back to where we're at. And, and so also Gulf talks to uh, Axel inside the bar, and then what happens? Um, he. Uh, he also called for uh, Officer Beatty to, to respond okay. as backup, and he basically at the end of the conversation as well. I'm just going to have to wait for my, my backup to get here. Uh, so he goes back outside. Um, he again confronts the guy, uh, and Officer Beatty comes yeah. up comes up on, on scene. Uh, you can see Officer Beatty pull pull any parts across the street um, on a uh, perpendicular road there. And um, so does Officer when Officer Beatty arrives, what does Officer Galt do first? He walks over to Beatty's car and uh, tells him. Uh, let's see here. But they said one second. Sorry. Okay. This is, uh, I can't believe how honest this this sergeant is. He still try to kind of protect his, you know, his, his, um, his officer, but he's being incredibly honest. I wouldn't have expected this. Uh, Officer B, Officer B pull, pulls on scene. Gall explains that he's uh, told him, boy, you're an idiot. Been walking up to the subject that the subject saying is that it's his constitutional right to be off stand, stand where he's standing at the manager of the business says one of his uh, waitresses was afraid to go outside. And I guess wait on the tables there. There's a couple tables outside. Um, so that was literally what Gall told him. Okay. Um, so some waitress so happen, fake scared and say. So then BD kind of takes over the call at this uh, at this point. Uh, he makes contact with the guy and does acknowledge and says that he's on a public uh, sidewalk. But the uh, business said that he was begging for money. Um, he had not made contact with the RP. He's just going off at this point of what was said in the uh, CAD call for dispatch. Um, so the he, he said that panhandling is you know against the law and he can't be panhandling out there. Um, the the gentleman says that you know he wasn't panhandling and that he was within his rights to be there. Um, and you know, just, yes, continue. Okay. So ultimately, the guy um, RPD tells the guy that you know he can't be there and that he needs his name. 
and uh, and information. The guy says that he's not going to identify himself. They go back and forth a few times. Um, he, you know, basically tells him, threatens him that he's going to go to jail if he doesn't give him his, his identification uh, because he's there investigating a crime to which he claims the business started the complaint. Um, so the the male, I think, could see that he was going to be put into handcuffs. So he alerts the officers that, um, or at least he perceived he was going to be in handcuffs. I should say he alerts the officers that he is armed and that he lawfully armed. He has a concealed weapon permit. He puts his arms out in front. Of him. Okay, Officer Beatty. Uh, and he makes it an exaggerated movement. He says, here's my hands out here. And Officer Beatty goes to, you know, take the gun out of his pocket. Um, I, I think that the male maybe felt a little uncomfortable with um, the officers taking the gun out of his pocket with his hands just being there. Right. So he actually suggests, you guys, guys, maybe I should be putting handcuffs. So then you see Officer Galton. That's when he comes in and puts the guy in handcuffs while Beatty's retrieving the firearm and then ultimately searches the male, uh, locates, I believe, some magazine in your pocket. Um, and that's what's um, the male the, 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 during the detention and search says, I do not consent to any searches. Or seizures. Um, he's told them several times that you know he's within his rights, and this, this is a violation of his right. He he, he was you know basically broadcasting that. So uh, after they handcuff him in front of the uh, the news from a brewery, there, uh, what happens? Um, well, I, I forgot to note as they were going to handcuff him, Officer B takes his sign out of his hand. But okay. yeah. uh, I don't know if that really is a note. Uh, but ultimately, they walk they walk him across the street to where Officer B parked his patrol car. Okay. Um, Officer B. Uh, Explain, is explaining to him that this is why that's the reason is why he's getting arrested or uh, why he's been detained. I should say not arrested. Right. Uh, and the guy says, "Well, since you have my firearm, I'll go ahead and give you, let you get my concealed weapons permit." And he tells him it's in my wallet, in my pocket. He directs Beatty to the wallet and ultimately gets his uh, Beatty gets his uh, concealed weapons permit. He uses that to identify him by name and date of birth. Um, he he runs him on teletype and confirms that he's not wanted. Uh, he doesn't run the concealed weapons permit number to, to verify that it's valid. Okay. Um, but he, he doesn't verify that the mail is not right. So he uses that to say, okay, now, since you've identified yourself, I'm going to let you go, basically. That's when they unsecure him. Uh, he, he actually hands him his firearm back and tells him to put it in his pocket. Again, you can see the subject's kind of uncomfortable with that, right. but ultimately he does take the gun, put it in his pocket, and again, pronounces his hand movement, saying, I'm going to keep up on the police force the man right here. And then BD went to make contact with the business. Okay. Um, so BD goes into the business and makes contact with the manager, Axel. So he violated him, violated him, violated him got his id finally because that's their drug they took a hit of that id and realized he didn't have any anything to uh be kidnapped for and uh then they say oh well here you go here's your gun and everything and you're good even though you knew you were good from the start we didn't believe you and we didn't we didn't want to investigate to find out and we didn't even, we didn't want to we didn't come here to enforce the law. Don't you get that? We came here to enforce their feelings. Is that correct? Yes. What was can you describe that interaction? Um but yeah, Blackberry, he he didn't he didn't lie one bit for them. And he's smart. Yeah, you already heard you report. This is bad. He know they idiots. Uh, so yeah, BD asked if he was immediately asked the manager was he was the male seen asking for money. Uh, and the, the bar manager said, no, I can't, I don't think he was asking for money, but he was, uh, you know, reiterates that one of his waitresses was nervous to go outside or whatever. Um, exactly. He then says immediately that he's going to call the sergeant me to kind of, I guess, run it by me. Um, but if he was not on their property, not asking for money, there wasn't much that he could do. They could've, he could have made him leave. So he kind of was telling the guy, if he's not asking for money, then we have no law violation. I can't make him, uh, make him move along or anything. Okay. In his mind, is what right. was thinking. Uh, so if, if you're not doing anything wrong, they try to get your ID to see if you did anything wrong so they can it's crazy then um, that's when officer b leaves and goes back to the car um the i forgot to mention actually let me let me go back okay. uh when he was uh when they escorted him over to the car uh the guy did make a statement he said uh i just want to put you guys on notice that you're violating my constitutional rights and that i would proceed or if i were you i would proceed with caution from here forward something to those lines and uh bd you know kind of argues with him and tells him no we're not violating your rights because you were panhandling okay and so okay so. Uh, so ultimately, he comes back over and the guy's already on handcuffs as before. He's got his gun. He tells him, since you weren't panhandling and asking for money, and I've got, I had, I already identified you, basically, that he wasn't, that he wasn't going to be detained any further. And the guy asked if he was free to leave. Um, he originally asked for a he, he said he would go get him a card and goes in the car. That's actually when BD calls me. And the subject, I think, was kind of almost maybe tired of waiting. And he says, he asked Officer Golf for what their names were. Right. And then he just says, I don't need a card. I'll just leave. And then he walks away. Okay, uh, going back to Officer Galt, if, if I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Uh, if Officer Galt had not called Officer Beatty to come to the scene, uh, what do you think would have happened? It appeared to me that uh, Officer Galt kind of knew he was in over his head. I don't think he really knew how to proceed. Um, that's why he called for backup. 
I think he was relying on a more senior officer to kind of guide him on and what to do. Uh, if he did not do that, I would like to think that he would have called me and uh, or the corporal, one or the other. I actually there was no corporal working that night. So uh, call me for advice on how to proceed. I don't see Officer Gall going to the extent uh, that Officer B did on his own. He, he clearly had that opportunity several times. He went back out of business, I think, twice. Um, he he wasn't forcing the issue at all. Did he talk to any customers uh, outside about what was going on? So basically he's saying one of them hyped the other one up. On, you recall? Yeah, I think yeah, there was one customer that was out there was said he'd been out there the whole time. And I think he asked them All right. 100% sure. But I think he asked them. I had made money the guys that know. It's great mod okay. if you like. All right, thank you, Karen. Nothing that really jumps out. Yeah, All right, uh Steve, uh, I'll make you the mod. Do you let me back up here? Uh did Officer Galt ever mention anything about panhandling? Do you recall that? At the beginning of his interaction with uh, the subject, what's up, S Bootlicker? Uh, hey, S Bootlicker, what is, what is your what is like your first name or something, man? I can't keep saying S <laughs> Bootlicker. I gotta use the name. Tells him that he's on the public sidewalk and is just saying, "God bless the the homeless vets." Galt tells him that he can't stand in the same place and say the same thing over and over. Then goes on to tell him that he cannot. But you can't stand in the same place and say the same thing over and over. What? Um, imagine, imagine. Imagine being America, home of the free, uh, a land of the free and home of the brave, and they tell you you can't stand in one spot and say the same thing over and over again. Come on. Beg for money because it's against city ordinance. Okay. Um, the male told Galt that he was not begging for money and that it would still be illegal because the city ordinance would be unconstitutional. You too, Karen. Um, okay, we've, we've, okay, we've already talked about Officer Beatty and the phone call part that uh, happened. Uh, do you feel that, that Officer Beatty X, and Officer Okay, Galt yeah, I'll call you X believe that panhandling was a currently a city ordinance absolutely I, they both said it um non-prompted in the on their body worn cameras at separate times um I, I don't know where they would get that impression or where they may have learned that but they definitely were under the impression that uh, they did have legal authority to seize them based on that uh, assumption i don't think either one of them did anything um intentionally wrong i think that they were more or less ignorant that the fact that it is that panhandling is just not illegal we can't detain based on that uh, so i think Pure ignorance. That's all they go. They go off for ignorance, arrogance, and ego. They were they were just operating on bad assumptions. Okay. Do you think that Officer Beatty uh, made the decision to detain this subject uh, because of his refusal to identify himself? Yes, I, I think that Officer Beatty thought that he had the legal right to identify him because he was, in his mind, investigating a crime. Um, uh, and that's why he was ultimately going to detain him. Uh, it kind of took a weird turn because he went for the gun immediately uh, instead of going for handcuffs immediately. And then the male ultimately asked to be handcuffed. Right. Um, okay. So it was, uh, but I do think that he was absolutely going down that path. That's what he was going for. Okay. Can you summarize the policy violation? You proffered a couple of uh, policy violations. The one, uh, can you read that from the record there? Uh, the group 2M violation of rules, orders, et cetera, issued by the city commission. Um, you know, it's basically he, he violated our rules and policies and procedures, regulations by mm. openly going uh, against what he did uh, for preliminary and follow-up investigations. Um, he's he, can y'all do y'all can y'all believe how honest he <laughs> this sergeant is? I can't like he really telling the truth. Like he, they went against this, they did this wrong, this wrong. They should have called me. They like man, he basically detained someone without the legal authority to do so. Um, so clearly in violation of that policy, um, it, I mean, as far as Officer Galt, I do think that he also uh, had a had a duty to recognize that what was going on was not okay. But again, I think he was naive and ignorant to the fact that panhandling is not against the law and we cannot force a panhandling complaint by uh, de detaining people. So I think that um, they, were, they were operating under the impression that they, what they were doing was correct. But we're just Okay, I'm just going to ask you straight, are you of the opinion that Officer Beatty and Officer Galt uh, violated this mm -hmm. subject's civil rights based on your review of the video evidence. Yes, absolutely. Um, again, I don't think it was intentional or malicious. I think that they thought what they were doing was right and that it just something like this. Okay, do you have anything further you'd like to add? Yeah, he's saying that, but he, you know, I know he, what he's saying in his mind is these guys are idiots and I wish they wouldn't have put me in this situation, but I'm not going to. I'm not gonna lie for them. I'm telling. I'm telling the truth. I'm gonna do my best to, you know, make it seem like they're just ignorant and not just egomaniacs out there. But I, I know he was upset about them and let them have it. No, I don't think so. 
Okay, this concludes the interview. As this investigation is continuing, you are ordered not to discuss any portion of this investigation except with legal counsel or your personal representative. Any request to deviate from this instruction must be directed to your commanding officer. Do you understand that? I do. The yeah. time is 7.28, and I'm going to terminate the recording at this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the officers that was on the scene. Then we're going to have the next one on the scene. I believe this is the first one that was on the scene. But uh, let's check the comments real quick. Uh, kid killed and wreck above the house. Then didn't hang around. Sad. Jelmore, what you talking about? Uh, X said he out there smoking. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blackbird and get away with it because they didn't know. That, yeah, I think that's what he was trying to. I don't. I don't even think he was trying to. I think he actually believes it and. It's probably true. They thought they would again that we we know that they run off ignorance. The the problem is that they run off ignorance and ego. So even if they they're wrong or they don't know, their ego won't allow them to do the right thing. I'm down, I'm downstairs. It's smoking, can't get out, can't get out wheelchair. Blackberry, oh man. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's higher ranking, higher ranks setting the low, setting the law and throwing the lower ones under the bus when it goes wrong. That could, yeah, that could be very true because they'll, we're going to listen okay. to this. Okay. You left, you left for work, but kid was killed while I left earlier. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that, man. It's administration of oath and perjury warning. IA number 2021-006. Officer Brett Thalk, ID number 1816. I'm Lieutenant Mark Servants with the New Smart Beach Police Department. Today's date is Friday, December 31st, 2021, and the current time is 1734 hours. I, I love this. Uh, the location of this interview is the Officer this Professor Dan located at the New Smart Beach Police Department. He's funny. Officer Galt declined to have union representation or legal counsel present for this interview. Officer Galt, are you aware that this interview is being recorded? Yes. I'm conducting an official administrative investigation concerning City of New Smyrna Beach policies and procedures, Section X, Group 2M, Group 2, Section M, violating the rules, orders, and policies issued and adopted by the City Commission, City Manager, and or Department Head. Specifically, Policy and Procedure Directive 15-2, Preliminary and Follow-Up Investigations, Section 15.2.7, which talks about investigative detentions. As a Florida law enforcement mm -hmm. officer in the Republic of the State of Florida, I'm empowered to take sworn statements. At this time, I'm asking to raise your right yeah. hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but Yeah. It, it's it's on it's on one and one and a half the speed, Jelmore. That that's why. That's why that's why it sounds like it's going so fast. Given by witness under oath will constitute perjury, which is a third degree felony according to Section eight thirty seven point oh two Florida statute. You understand that if you knowingly tight. make material mistakes <laughs> of fact to me during this investigation, he is well as a crime of perjury. Okay, I'm going to sign this. I'm going to have you sign it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that boy nervous. <laughs> it's all good, Jill Moore. Five minute rights for disciplinary. Hey, everybody, let me know if it's uh, going too fast. Like, I want you to still be able to catch what, what he's saying. Interview, otherwise called the Garrity warning. I wish to advise you that you're being questioned as part of an official investigation of the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. You will be asked questions specifically directed and narrowly related to the performance of your official duties or no. office. You are entitled to all rights and privileges guaranteed by the laws and the Constitution of this state and the Constitution of the United States, including the right not to be compelled to be to incriminate yourself. I further wish to advise you that if you refuse to testify or to answer questions relating to the performance of your official duties or fitness for duty. Yeah, he is nervous. He knows, man, I don't want to use certain words because you know how YouTube is, but you know he effed up. It will be considered an act of insubordination and a violation you know of you by superior or competent authority. If you do answer, neither your statements nor any information or evidence which is gained by reason of such statements can be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding, <laughs> except for perjury or obstruction of justice charges. However, these statements may be used against you in relation to the subsequent department charges. The aforementioned advisement of rights is not the warning in criminal cases under the Miranda decision. As mentioned, Miranda has no application in a disciplinary interview. Understand? Sir, okay. Sign, date, and I'll put the location now. 
yeah, too slow can lose concentration. Yeah. Yeah, I put it fast like that because I be needing them to speed it up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he is definitely nervous. And look how hard he got that right, that right hand clinch. Please state your name, rank, and duty assignment. Also, run. Hey, throughout the throughout this interview, check out the right hand. Patrol uh, officer. On what shift do you work? Uh, Robert Schiff, on what shift? Have you reviewed the USB drive files, documents, recorded interviews, YouTube videos, BWC video, videos, the central dispatch radio and phone calls that provided you on Monday, December 27, 2021? Yes, sir. Before we go on, I'd like to say that obviously everything that on this particular incident was captured either on the subject video, YouTube videos that have been posted, as well as your BWC and uh, and uh, Officer Davies BWC. So you know, as we talk about these questions and stuff, you know, if you say something that isn't exactly what you said on the video, that's not an issue. The issue, you know, we want to get to the core of it, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, at, a, at approximately 1927 hours on Tuesday, December 14th, 2021, were you dispatched to a call for service identified as a suspicious person, call number D2134820050 at the New Smyrna Brewery located at 143 Canal Street? Yes. <laughs> did you read the call notes while en route to the call? Yes. Uh, what, what did they tell you? Um, the call notes are saying that it was a male dressed in all black. Um, black shirt, black jacket, and um, originally he was asking for money. From people had there, and that's all I read because I was right around the corner from the scene. So, so what crime were you intending to investigate there? Well, at that point, they said that he was um, at the in the business asking for money, and the business owner just wanted him to be moved along. And yeah, Blackbird. But at that point, he was in the business asking for people money. I started not interviewing that. Okay, is uh. <laughs> uh, do they call that panhandling or asking for money? Is yes. what it said in the call notes? Yes. Is, is panhandling a crime or a city ordinance violation? It's not. That's city ordinance violation. Okay. Upon your arrival on scene, what did you observe? Um, a black male or not? A white male dressed in all black. No, I'll bet that Upon up. your arrival on scene, what did you observe? Um, a black male. Yeah, that tell you a lot. <laughs> that tell you a lot right there. It's not. That's city ordinance violation. Okay. Upon your arrival on scene, what did you observe? Um, a black male or not? A white male dressed in all black, uh, standing on the sidewalk uh, behind the car. <laughs> Uh, only design and walking back and forth up and down the sidewalk. Okay. So, you know, upon the scene, what did you see? A black male? You... <laughs> wow. When you made contact with, we'll, we'll call him Mr. Gray because we ultimately did identify him during the encounter. Uh, can you describe the interaction you had with him? Um, we know what's on his mind. I was just trying to be like people, like I am. Most callers are trying to get to know who he was, um, what his purpose was there. Uh, he was really one, not much shit, not like asking or answering my just questions, just normal questions I had. Just what were you doing there? Um, is there a purpose you're up here? Um, stuff like that. He was just, just he answered every single one of those questions. Uh, keep it to himself at that point. Okay. What, what did he tell you he was doing? Uh, that he was just so uh, the sign was like, um, God bless the homeless vets. He was just trying to make people aware that God needs to bless the homeless vets. Okay, he oh, so he did tell you where was he at when you first encountered him? Um, on the sidewalk by the car, by the way, by the curb, yeah, the car's parked. Yeah. Okay, why did you ask Mr. Gray to move along or leave the area? <laughs> um, <laughs> It's not at all. He was saying that he was um, asking his customers for money. Um, he just didn't want him up front of his business. Okay. What was uh, Mr. Gray's response? Uh, he said he wasn't wasn't going to move. He said he has the right to be there. He didn't want to. He didn't feel like moving along. Okay. Was he holding a sign that said "God bless the homeless vets"? Yes. Why did you ask Mr. Gray for identification or other to otherwise identify himself? Um, it's usually on calls that we go to. We <laughs> try to identify everyone. I was trying to get to know who he was, um, just so I can identify him and say that. I'm in contact with this man. The ID crack. This was this and the just wanted to move to at that point. So what did Mr. Gray tell you? That he was not going to provide ID. Okay. Did he tell you anything about himself? He said his first name was Jeff. Okay. Was there any dispute over what was public property or sidewalk or what was owned by the business? Uh, further down the investigation, yeah, the business owner was not aware of what his boundaries were for the sidewalk. We later found that out. Okay. He wasn't aware of what like the line was. Who wasn't aware? No, business. Check out that right hand. Business owner. Okay. So that kind of leads to my next question. Mm -hmm. At this location, did, did you know what was public property and what was business property? Well, yeah, no, I, yeah. yeah, I can imagine that. And certain feet off the curb is still owned by the city due to being public road. And then the public sidewalk, obviously, and then whatever the, the business had, the benches were, I was assuming it was the business okay. property. All right. Assuming. Why did you tell Mr. Gray that asking for money is technically against city ordinance? At that point, about handling was a city ordinance violation. Okay, so it was your belief that it was? Yes. Where did, where did you get that? Um, I thought that 
early on in the training that we had the call and um there was people asking for money and that and this this guy doing the interview is asking some good questions and it's so funny because they can't escape it <laughs> you can't escape the questions like they would do with us they for us they just won't answer the question when they know here you got to answer i thought i looked up a senior violation that was fan and it's not pain, it's not a senior violation it's a state statute actually like so for uh what's the state statute referred to uh like if you're blocking like stepping out in traffic uh blocking people who try to right to move so it's a it's a 316 violation for some type of impediment of traffic right if it's you're traffic, right. soliciting or entering traffic patterns right that wasn't the case here was it okay <laughs> you speak to the party inside the business uh, so describe your conversation with him um as I'm, i was like hey can you run down what's going on um initially it was like oh he was up talking to people at the table asking them for money and then my when my wages went out um he was he went on to say that he was uh so or harassing her and um he wouldn't go into detail of that and the waitress didn't want to go into detail about that either okay. so at that point i went back out <laughs> And you re-engage Mr. Brown. You see yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Right. So at this point in your investigation, did you have any reasonable or articulable suspicion that Mr. Gray committed, was committing, or was about to commit a crime or a violation of city ordinance? At that point, I believed he might have been asking people for money what? to answer my questions. Um, so that's why I went back out and re-engaged with him. I thought we had something maybe stirring up. So so at this point, you are so he just admits to fishing just now. That's that's him admit, admitting to fishing. Now he's now he's trying to you know he's fishing for something now you're still thinking panhandling is is a city ordinance yes. violation yes. and you're acting on that assumption yes. to try to continue the investigation okay uh, <laughs> who did you call on the phone when you went inside the business i called an officer <laughs> and what did you tell yeah. him? i said that hey we have a the business owner is stating that this is what's going on and the mail is not yeah check out that right hand man <laughs> yeah. answering any questions and at that point i was i bet i better going for maybe senior officer smog and try to work through the situation <laughs> okay yeah i'm ali two sort of friends who love to hit the open road watch discovery drives so you told me some of the details of what i told him what the business owner told me and that um at this point i just need someone else to kind of hear the stories and work through it and see what we have okay so when Oscar Beatty arrived did you go meet him I did yes I had given right now what was going on and what okay. this is our company and what um the mail was actively doing at that point which was okay, can you describe the same thing Beatty's he's doing when he got there um he was asking him the kind of the same questions I was kind of starting to open the, the process um and then when he didn't want to identify himself that's when um he got to win instead of talking to the business owner he kind of went hands-on with mr gray mm -hmm. and at that point look at it look at this snake he, he gonna he gonna uh try to throw his partner under the bus um i usually like when we investigate other crimes and stuff like that we listen to both sides of the stories um come back talk to each other and i that I boy that happened maybe because he was frustrated with him frustrated okay. with him um do you think that would have been a more prudent course of action to to continue the investigation and figure out I what's did. going on I think, yes uh <laughs> did you hear officer Beatty tell uh Mr Gray that if he didn't identify himself he was going to go to jail I did yes okay okay I want to go over uh the policy and procedure directive I know you've probably read it um <laughs> I did want to bring your attention that you know the record shows that uh you read that on power mm -hmm. on uh April 28th of 2021 because that's when you read it and signed it uh the directive itself um in the section that I already enumerated that talked about investigative detention. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Blackbird. Yeah, it, it is. It's really everybody for themselves at this point. Cause now, now he trying to say, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't put hands on him. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was a, that was buddy over there. He, he, you know, he just came there. I, I don't know why, what would make him, Put hands on him and tell him that but you know that's horrible then to say <laughs> but but what i meant to say is um what's what's not gonna work is them saying oh well we didn't know because jeff said you're violating my rights he told him it says an officer is permitted to stop and briefly detain a person for investigative purposes if the officer has a reasonable suspicion supported by articulable facts 
that criminal activity may be afoot, even if the officer lacks probable cause. Such encounters must be evaluated by considering the totality of the circumstances. Investigated detention should last no longer than is necessary to effectuate the purpose of the stop. The investigative methods employed should be the least intrusive, reasonably available to verify or dispel the officer's suspicion in a short period of time. Any investigative detention must conform to current law. Well, current law, you know, that governs it in the state of Florida is uh, Florida statute 901.151. Are you aware of that? Stop and frisk statute. It's referenced as a reference point in, in this directive uh, under the attachment section uh, that basically says the same thing. You understand that directive? I do. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, and what you know now, I'm going to ask you in retrospect, uh, after reviewing everything, all the body worn camera videos, uh, his videos, the YouTube videos, documents and stuff, would you like to make a statement uh, about what you've, uh, what you know? Like about the whole situation? Yeah, about, yeah. Uh, I definitely think that we probably, that's why when I was on scene, I didn't go hands on, I didn't tell him it was. No, you know, no, I was on scene. No. So, <laughs> Come here. No. That's why when I was on scene, I didn't go hands on. I didn't tell him he was detained. I didn't say any of that. I asked him to any weapon on him. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. It just wasn't like a big, big guy. Oh, yeah. In my head for me. Um, that's okay. why I called for Officer Didi. I know he's had years, a couple years on the range. So he, he's the senior officer lead, my zone partner. Um, I called him. I definitely think that when he got there, that the course of action he took probably was not the best one because he didn't, wasn't able to get full side of the story. And uh, I kind of wish that we would have went back and had him talk to the business owner. Oh, now. Um, and then have him talk to talk to me. I was like, hey, this would be good. What did he tell you? I was like, what did he have here now? And I think that we skipped over that step. <laughs> he went straight to going hands on with him. That said, was clearly. This is only what we have. Okay. Coming back to me and saying, hey, this is what he told me. Okay. And kind of see the differences and see if we can work out with the business owner. Well, so. so you call him to the scene. If I, <laughs> if I understand you correctly, you were counting on his uh Man, I love this <laughs> experience to try to resolve, help resolve the situation. I was, yeah. Okay. In your view now, in retrospect, uh, do you believe panhandling is a crime or a city ordinance violation? Uh, do you believe that carrying a sign that says, God bless the homeless vets on a public sidewalk, is there any crime or violation there? No, sir. Uh, is there any crime or violation by a, a person that's carrying a concealed weapon lawfully with a concealed weapons permit? No, sir, as long as it's valid. Okay. So going back, what would you do different? Um, <laughs> I'd probably go back bad, and <laughs> kind of work through that myself, honestly. Um, go back to the business owner, be like, hey, this is what we have. This is what's going on. And uh, probably just work that scene by myself. Um, if he <laughs> identifies him, himself, that's just right. Um, but then like, hey, just, just let you know the business owner doesn't want you to go from it. You're allowed to be on the sidewalk, the public sidewalk, but he doesn't want you talking to any employees and right, anything like that. Um, and at that point, I'd probably just let the matter be. Um, so if, if this gentleman continued to refuse and wasn't committing any violation, he would have what? I probably would have got back in my car and talk, uh, contacted the supervisor to tell him, hey, this is what was going on. This is what we have. Um, okay. Just let him know that this dude, imagine like this description was on the street and um, just, just in case there were further incidents of her, um, you know, <laughs> we can at least know that you were talking about that description. Do you think it would have been a good idea uh, <laughs> what is the call to to uh, check if a city ordinance existed for panhandling? Yes. Okay. All right, do you have anything else to add? No, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, this concludes the interview. Uh, because this is an ongoing investigation, I'm going to ask that you do not talk to anybody else about this, except if you want to talk to a union or your personal counsel, if you have one, <laughs> you can talk to them. Do not talk to anybody else involved in the investigation. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to terminate recording at this time. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Woo. <laughs> Man, that right hand. <laughs> he ready to go knock somebody out. But um, <laughs> all right. So we got him. He he arrived at the scene first, didn't know what he was talking about, didn't do no investigation, came there to enforce their feelings. And Jeff wasn't going for it because he believes in standing up for his rights. Um uh, and God put it in his heart to be there. So this cop, that well, the one that we uh, just watched, uh, said he called this cop who we, who's on the screen right now because he's supposed to be a superior and he's the one that went hands on. So, yeah. <laughs>
random citizen. We are watching a interrogation for when they violated the rights of Jeff Gray when he was standing on the public sidewalk uh, exercising his, his rights, holding up a sign that said, God bless the homeless vets. So the business owner didn't like that. So he could, first he had a di dispute with Jeff and Jeff didn't leave. Then he called the police and then they tried to make it. Uh, they tried to use the law to uh, violate him. So they used the law to break to break the law. And, and this guy here is the second. Beach Police Department, Office of Professional Standards, Administration of Oath and Perjury Warning, IA number 2021-006. Officer K. Beatty, ID number 1609. I am Lieutenant Mark Severance with the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. Today's date is Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. And the current time is 1754 hours. The location of this interview is the Office of Professional Standards Conference Room, located at the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. Officer Beatty declined to have union representation or legal counsel present for this interview. Officer Beatty, are you aware this interview is being recorded? <laughs> I'm he don't like that. <laughs> investigation concerning Group 2, Section M, violating the rules, orders, and policies issued and adopted by the City Commission, City Manager, and or Department Head. Specifically, Policy and Procedure Directive 15-2, which is Preliminary and Follow-Up Investigations, Section 15.2.7, Investigative Detentions. As a Florida law enforcement officer, no Republican of the state of Florida. I'm no, New Smyrna Beach. States. At this time, I would ask that you raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Any false statement about material matters given by a witness under oath will constitute perjury, which is a third degree felony according to Section 837.02 Florida statutes. Do you understand that if you knowingly make material misstatements of facts to me during this investigation, <laughs> you will have committed the crime of perjury? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to sign this. They hate accountability. Like this is, I know when them walking into this room, oh, they hate this in it, but they can't get away from this. Well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> well, it's going to be good, right man. I love this, this uh, interview. The document is the advisement of rights for a disciplinary hearing, otherwise called the Garrity warning. I wish to advise you that you're being questioned as part of an official investigation of the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. You will be asked questions specifically directed and narrowly related to the performance of your official duties or fitness for office. <laughs> well, I hope nobody's hungry. You are entitled to all rights and privileges guaranteed by the laws and the Constitution of this state <laughs> and the Constitution of the United States. But every right million. to not be compelled to incriminate yourself. I further wish to advise you that if you refuse to testify or to answer questions relating to the performance of your official no, he's probably red. It might be the camera, but he's probably red. Duties or fitness for duty, it will be considered an act of insubordination and a violation of a direct order by. And, and I, I have the uh, you know, you know, they don't have good, good, um, good quality because we up to seven twenty. I tried to make it as good as possible. Superior or competent authority. If you do answer, neither your statements nor any information or evidence which is gained by reason of such statements can be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding, except for perjury or obstruction of justice charges. However, these statements may be used against you in relation to subsequent departmental charges. The aforementioned advisement of rights is not the warning in criminal cases under the Miranda decision. As mentioned, Miranda has no application in a disciplinary interview. You understand? Keep the sign date and I'll write the location on there. <laughs> oh man come on now that's why i let's make sure i'm on time for you for the record please state your name rank and current duty assignment so we need some police department control uh, officer uh what shift you work uh, the, the problem problem. Shift. Yeah. uh have you reviewed the usb drive files documents recorded interviews youtube videos pwc videos central dispatch radio recordings etc that i provided you on monday december 27 2021 
before we go any further, uh, obviously everything in this particular incident is either captured on our video or the subject's video. So I don't think there's any dispute over what was said, who did what, uh, and what happened at the incident. So as I ask you, lines, you know, if you say something that doesn't agree with the video in the way it was said, I'm not making an issue with that. You know, we'll, we'll work through that if, if there's any inconsistencies, you know, because there's no way you could possibly remember everything you said per day. Okay. So I just want to make that clear for the record. Uh, Okay, the first question is, did Officer Gall call you on the phone and request your assistance to a suspicious person call on Tuesdays, December 14, 2021, at the New Summer Brewery, which is 143 Canal 2? I believe it is. Okay, did you read the call notes while en route to that location? Uh, briefly. I what did they say? Skimmed through them. I know we had a mail out front of a business, and I believe that the call note says that he was panhandling on private property, but not at this time. Okay. Uh, I think it said he was asking customers for money uh, in front of the business and harassing customers, something to that effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when you arrived at the scene, did Officer Galt meet with you and provide you information concerning the call before you spoke with his subject? Um, I believe hey, what's up? across the street. Okay. And as I walked What's up, the, everybody? Hit the like button. And, what did he tell you? I, it's my recollection. He just said that he was cooperating. And I really, I'm not going to really say anything else besides that. Okay. When you made contact with Mr. Gray, you confirmed that he was on a public sidewalk. And told him the business said he was asking for money and that they had every right to have him move along. Is that correct? <laughs> okay, that brings me to my next question. Is asking for money, or in other words, other, another way to call it panhandling, uh, in a public place, public sidewalk, is that a crime or a city ordinance violation? It's been hours now. No, I want you to tell me what were you thinking when I when I when I came to the scene, mm -hmm. um there when I came on the scene, I didn't think we had a city ordinance, I just swore we had a city ordinance. Okay. Um that you weren't allowed to handle. I swear we had to say the ordinance. Even so, even more so, because I could have sworn that I've been told to enforce that on. So and now you're saying somebody told him to enforce this. So, yep, everybody for themselves. Okay. Uh, I have been corrected since then. Okay. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I know what you're talking about under the MLK. Uh, Hold on. Before, before we get into this, he said he's been corrected since then. So for the people who think that doing this doesn't help and, and making sure that we hold him accountable doesn't help he's obviously uh been corrected and he's gonna think twice about before he violates somebody else that's f dot property uh there is a florida statute 316 2045 i think that deals with impeding traffic it doesn't deal with what they're doing to impede traffic that's a statute mm -hmm. and under the bridge there uh we we have had F dot trespass authority for that property. And we've trust, it's my understanding we've trespassed people from there and have made maybe even made arrests for trespass after warning. Even though they were panhandling, they weren't arrested for panhandling, they were arrested for trespass after warning. Okay. All right. So uh you went on to say to uh let me let me go back. Uh, the the subject was subsequently identified as uh Jeffrey Gray. So I'm just gonna call him Mr. Gray from this point on. Okay. You went on to say that because you're there uh, and they that they called about Mr. Gray, they we have to identify him. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> what was Mr. Gray's response? He pulled out a refrigerator magnet inside of his pocket. What were they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you tell him that if he does not provide ID identification, that he would go to jail? Yes. Why? Because at the time, I thought we had a crime. I had the manager who was standing right next to us, um, and he was saying that his waitresses were scaring him out and that they felt threatened and that he was on private property asking for money. And what I should have done was investigated that first okay. before yeah. detaining him. And yes. him across the street. Yes. Um, because when I went back and uh -huh. asked the manager more particulars about what he was talking about, um, <laughs> I believe it's my video. You see the video. I, I swear yep. to him, like that's yep, yeah, yeah, Stevenson. That that's why I wanted to play this video because this helps us get into the the psychology that they're going with. None of that is illegal. Okay, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later as well. Uh, so up to this point, when you ask for ID. Uh, in, up to this point in your investigation, did you have any reasonable or articulable suspicion that Mr. Gray was had committed, was committing, or was about to commit a crime or violation of city ordinance? It, it, what crime were you thinking of? That he was either trespassing or assault, but that's just based on what he meant. Assault. 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 He, he was his witnesses were being threatened. <laughs> no, I, I don't recall hearing anything. Hey, props to this interviewer. Think about that from, from the person, but... Uh, I said, uh, I'm not going to go over the video line by <laughs> yeah. line about what was said, but it's a matter of record already. So uh, is holding a cardboard sign saying God bless the homeless vets on a public sidewalk or asking for money or panhandling a crime or city ordinance violation? No. You've learned that since this incident? Well, from the panhandling part. Okay. I knew everything else was not. Okay. So holding the sign on a public sidewalk, no issue, right? No. It didn't say anything about money or, or anything. Okay. 
Did Mr. Gray ask if he was being detained? Yes. What did you tell him that he was? Can you tell me why you decided to detain Mr. Gray? Ooh. It was in front of a restaurant that was open and full, and I didn't want to make the scene because he was being not aggressive, just argumentative and defiant. So I hey, to man, what you got going, going on? on. Uh, black, black bird? In front of the restaurant. So at this point, you're still under the impression that you're acting under your authority. I don't, yeah, I understand that we had it. As you moved to detain Mr. Gray, did he tell you that he was armed lawfully and had a concealed weapons permit? No. Yes and no. He he said he was armed. He said he that he was armed, but he didn't say anything about the concealed weapons for the guy across the street. I'll have to correct you on that because if you watch the video, Ooh. he does say I'm armed, pauses for a second lawfully, and I have a concealed weapons permit. Okay. As you were taking the sign from it. So that's a matter of record. That's what we said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't that's listen. Matter, but, okay. Basically, he doesn't listen. Why did you seize the firearm before he was secured in handcuffs or at all? If he was only being detained pending further investigation. Well, at that point, because I thought he was committing a crime, otherwise I want to put him in handcuffs, that he's he's <laughs> he's resisting without violence. He's I'm trying to conduct an investigation and he doesn't want anything to do with it. He doesn't identify himself. So that's why I detain him. If I'm detaining somebody, I'm not gonna leave. So you're conducting an investigation. He doesn't want anything to do with with it because <laughs> he doesn't need to be a part of the investigation. He's not doing anything. <laughs> And he, they think we're being difficult for that. Okay. <laughs> lawfully detained. I, I think the whole world is about trying to, to stop right. Handcuff him first, and then deal with the weapon issue if you don't handcuff him. Well, he was being handcuffed. Right. He, he, that had not been done yet, and you were already diving in his pockets. So, <laughs> all right. Why did you tell him his attorney is a court thing and not a police thing? Can you explain that? We're not required to have an attorney present during our questioning. We're either conducting an investigation or we're conducting Miranda warning questioning, which well, if he's invoking his right to have an attorney present, he doesn't have to speak. True. But I mean, we're not calling his lawyers to right. come to the okay. After you walked him across the street, did he advise you that you were violating his civil rights and to proceed cautiously? Yes. What was your response to that? Do you recall? I don't recall. I don't recall. <laughs> he told you, you violate my rights. Proceed cautiously. What, you know, what did you take from the, uh, I, I don't recall that. They don't care nothing about our rights. He didn't care nothing about his rights. He didn't want to listen it. At this point, the reason he doesn't recall is because he doesn't listen. He's just going off ignorance and ego. After removing his handcuffs, did you again tell him that panhandling was against city ordinance? Pretty sure I did. Okay. Panhandling on private property. I, I believe that's what I said. Okay. I am not sure. But did you, you don't even know. Party he, inside the business? He don't even know what he told. Yes. Can not you, inside the business. It was on the front porch. Can you describe your conversation with him? Um, I just asked him what he was complaining about. What was the problem with the mail mm -hmm. and he said that he's he was begging for money or asking customers for money on private property and he said that he was standing in the same spot where i made contact with him at so i went and explained to him that that wasn't private property that was public so in his mind there was a dispute over what the business owned and what the was public yeah, so he pointed out that he thought he owned all the way up to where there's the curve basically it's a, it's a large curve that hits like the telephone with the light poles right but he thought he owned all that and i pointed out to him down the street that jason's corner right has a canopy that stops at their line right which is a crease in the concrete. So in, in, in liberal sense of the terms, their, their little sidewalk cafes where their tables are sort of could be construed that that's a business property or they're allowed to conduct business there. And then the rest of it is the public sidewalk, which is pretty clear. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, yeah, the sidewalk was built and then there's concrete between the building and yeah. the sidewalk. So it's all one big piece of sidewalk, but you can see a line that goes straight down. The side. Okay. I explain that. Okay. To who? The manager. Of the outside. But I heard you explain it to Mr. Gray later as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after speaking with the, uh, the business employee, the manager, uh, Axel, take name, his breathing out. Evidence that any crime or city ordinance had been committed at that point. Now, Are you breathing? So investigation right there? resulted in that there was no crime, even assuming that your assumption that panhandling was a crime. Correct. Okay. He actually, when I asked him why it, we could get told that all the time, he threatened me or she threatened me. Right. So all right, Blackbird. Is, and he said, "Well, he didn't really say anything to my waitress. We'll be she here. just is afraid to come back outside now because he's here." Okay. And yeah. I said, "Well, that's not a that's not on him. Right. He's allowed to be where he's at." Okay. And Fair enough. Who knows? Uh, did you call Sergeant Kirkland after the fact to advise him of the incident? Yes. Can you describe what his response was to you? Uh, he said, <laughs> "Shall we violate every right he has?" Other side of the conversation. On the phone. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, Hello. I hear you. Uh, he said, "Shall we violate every right he has?" Okay. Uh, I could hear the other side of the conversation on the phone, but. Uh, Jeez. What do you mean by that? I mean, that's just what he said. I told him what went down. I told him, you know. <laughs> The manager saying this, and he's being so, defiant. So to get space between the manager and him, we detained him. So the investigation brought him over to my car, and then he's like, "Well, you know, I hope you just make a big deal of this because you just 
like I think I don't know if he said what amendment, but he's like you just violated his rights. Okay. Um, I want to discuss with you a little bit about the policy procedure direct, directive fifteen dash two. Imagine how he felt after that one. Once he called his sergeant, and his sergeant say, "Hey man, you you just violated every one of his rights. I'm not going to protect you from that. You, I don't know what you were thinking, <laughs> but uh, you on your own with this one." <laughs> uh, the record, the DMS record shows that you signed this off on nine nineteen of twenty twenty. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was published in you F an idiot. It was published in nine twenty. So when the revision came out, you had reviewed it and signed it. Uh, specifically, the, the section that we're talking about is 15.2.17 investigative detention it says an officer is permitted to stop and briefly detain a person for investigative purposes if the officer has a reasonable suspicion supported by articulable facts that criminal activity may be afoot even if the officer lacks probable cause such encounters must be evaluated by considering the totality of the circumstances investigative detention should last no longer than is necessary to effectuate the purpose of the stop the investigative methods employed should be the least intrusive means reasonably available to verify or dispel the officer's suspicion in a short period of time any investigative detention must conform to current law I want to bring your attention that one of the, the current law that's applicable here is one of the attachments here. Well, there's several attachments, but the, the one I'm going to reference is Florida Statute 901151, which is Florida Stop and Frisk Law. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with that? Okay. Uh, so, that being said, uh, based on the facts of this incident, as reviewed in this investigation, do you feel that you violated Policy and Procedure Directive 15 2 regarding that investigative detention? At the time, I did not. Looking back at it and, and being peeled apart, uh, Yes, I should have investigated oh, I further. Gonna, you and better answer. If he was going to move off the sidewalk, he doesn't have to move off the sidewalk. We could have taken the investigation inside the establishments to say where the complaint anyways and figured out what went down. And then afterwards, I find out that Gall had already done all this, but didn't. But I wasn't made aware of it. But. So so uh, mm. knowing what you know now. <laughs> Just clowns running around, not knowing nothing, ready to violate our rights. Don't know nothing about nothing. Just, uh that the investigation has aired out. You know, like I told you at the very beginning, it, the record is undisputed of what was said, what was done, and by everyone involved on video and audio. Uh, so knowing all that and knowing now that there isn't any panhandling ordinance, there was no crime being committed, the investigation bore that out. Uh, if I'm understanding you right, with, with that fact, you, would you agree that the, the intent of the investigative detention was violated? Yes. Okay. But if I had the knowledge that I have now, I would have never done that. Totally no qualified immunity, you no way. You tap into that knowledge. One, you call your supervisor, right? Always. Two, you have access to muni code via your, your computer. You can check and see if panhandling is a violation or an ordinance before you even get there. Uh, property issues can be checked on the property pages website. Have you ever used that? Yeah. Or I, property I, lines? And, yeah. I mean, I, hmm. well, I knew the property lines. Yeah. yeah all the I'm, I'm not disputing the fact that I should have investigated prior to. And I want to make it clear that uh, he has no, this subject had no obligation to identify. I don't know why they're not showing this to everybody as a training to what you don't do. Define himself. Absolutely not. He was committing a crime. Bro, he knew that. Yeah. I didn't. I thought he was. Oh, okay. let's bet. Uh, what you say? Make it clear that uh, he has no, this subject had no obligation to identify himself. Absolutely not. He was committing a crime. Bro, he knew that. Bro, yeah. I didn't. I what happened? To identify himself. Absolutely not. Or that, uh, he has no, this subject had no obligation to identify himself. Absolutely not. He was committing a crime. Bro, he knew that. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, I thought he was. Okay. Oh, uh, in retrospect, after reviewing your actions during this incident, <laughs> would you like to make a statement or add anything else to the record? Uh, I think my record speaks for itself, and the community as a whole would testify on my behalf that this is <laughs> what he's putting on video is not my normal actions. This is not how I conduct myself. Come on, my guy. <laughs> detain him illegally. I thought I had a crime, and therefore, I thought I had the right to detain him because he was hiding himself. So that when I had the crime, it would have been resisting, but I should have, I could have just left him there to himself, told him to keep his hands out of his pockets. Oh, we got to. I thought I had a crime and that what speaks for itself and the community as a whole. Again, I want to make it clear that uh, he has no, this subject had no obligation to identify himself. Absolutely not. He wasn't committing a crime. Bro, he knew that. Yeah. I didn't. I thought he was. Okay. Uh, in retrospect, after reviewing your actions during this incident, would you like to make a statement or add anything else to the record? Check this guy out and what statement he want to make. I think my record speaks for itself. And the I think my record speaks for itself. My behalf that this is what he's putting on video is not my normal actions. What he's putting on video. What he's putting on video. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> this is not how I conduct my stuff. I don't, I don't handcuff people and detain them illegally you don't handcuff people and detain them illegally but that's what you did i thought i had a crime 
you thought you had a crime. How many other times have you thought you had a crime, but that person didn't know their rights, so you know they just ended up getting violated, and nothing happened to you. And therefore, I thought I had the right to detain him because he was not being himself. <laughs> so that when I had the crime, <laughs> it would have been resisting. But so he thought he had a crime, and he and you, they try to make a crime so they can get you for something. I should have. I could have mm -hmm. just left him there. Himself, told him to keep his hands out of his pockets. Golf is there. Golf is because you started. Why I did more investigating. Okay, I know what I should have. Been. Looking hindsight, I I see where I went wrong. Okay, this is by no means uh, the way I do business. I'm probably one of the more professional people in this department. Okay, I just want to. Uh, the, the last thing I want to add is. Yeah, check uh, what. <laughs> you know, he he was not committing a crime. Obviously, the facts. Bear I hate this people. Uh, so. You you could have done things a lot differently. Uh, I appreciate your candor in, in answering the questions to the best of your ability. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Okay. Uh, I don't have any further questions. This is an always still an ongoing investigation. So I, I'm going to ask you uh, not to speak with anyone else about this, except your union rep or a personal representative of your choice. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to terminate recording at this time. Yeah, he ain't got nothing else to say. But, um... So yeah, so I played that so we we can get an idea of the mentality that they are arriving at the scene with, as you can see. So what this allows us to do is um address some of these things, uh, address some of these. So when they get there, we gotta let them know what rights that uh what amendment rights that they're violating. Uh and we also have to let them know that we're not being uh we're not being uh, uh we shouldn't have to let them know any of that really we should say we we are well within our rights if they don't know their rights that's that's their problem they're supposed to know our rights way way more than we know them because they're supposed to be sworn to protect it hey what's up damon all the way in socal he literally said, I'm no more professional than the rest of my department. Man, I bet, I bet his sergeant was upset with that part. Like, bro, it, why would you even say that craziness, man? What does that say about the department if, if, if you're one of the better ones? Jeez, man. I don't know. I, I, I went to check that out with y'all. I'm about to go. Hey, do y'all mind if we go back and hear this his his closing statement tell me if y'all want to hear his closing statement again <laughs> your, your computer you can check and see his panhandling the interviewer was giving him way way more options he you could have did this you could have did this you could have did this you could have did that you chose not to do any of those I know, but I'm, I'm not disputing the fact that I mean, I a lot of news can be checked on the property appraiser's website. Have you ever used that? Yeah, I'm, I'm property not, lines. Or, yeah, I mean, I a lot of I knew the property lines. Yeah, I okay. know, but I'm, I'm not disputing the fact that I should have investigated prior to. And I want to make it clear that uh, he has no this subject had no obligation to identify himself. Absolutely not. He wasn't committing a crime. Right. He knew that. Yeah, I didn't. I thought he was. Okay. Uh, in retrospect, after reviewing your actions during this incident, would you like to make a statement or add anything else to the record? I think my record speaks for itself, and <laughs> the community as a whole would testify on my behalf that this is what this guy is a clown putting on video is not my normal actions. This is not how I conduct myself. I don't I don't handcuff people and, and detain them illegally. I thought I had a crime, and therefore, I thought I had the right to detain him because he was hiding himself. So that when I had the crime, it would have been resisting, but. I should have. I could when, have you had, when, when you had the crime, himself, don't keep what? His pockets. Golf was there. Golf was there. just right. why, why I did more investigating. Okay. I know what I should have been looking. Then he threw it on his partner. Well, what's well, my partner was there too. He, he could have told me that, hey. <laughs> I, say, I, I see where I went wrong. Okay. This is by no means uh, the way I do business. I'm probably one of the more professional people in this department. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to, uh, the, the last thing I want to add is that. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, he, he was not committing a crime, obviously, the facts bear that out. And uh, you, you could have done things a lot differently. Uh, I appreciate your candor in, in answering the question. You see the best of your ability. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't have any further questions. This is an on, still an ongoing investigation. So I, I'm going to ask you uh, not to speak with anyone else about this, except your union rep or a personal representative as a choice. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to terminate recording at this time. All right. So let's go back. Pretty much asked this to do. When you don't want to. This is, this is back when, when they show what, what actually was happening, the type of energy they had then. To identify yourself and we're called. So it's totally different if we're driving by and that's you over there, right? You're not requesting anything on your sign. You're not breaking any laws, okay? When they say, when they complain to dispatch that you're asking for money and that there are customers who are telling the well, staff that that is against the law. So we're doing an investigation <laughs> to see if that actually occurred, okay? That's the only reason why you're being detained. But because it's an actual investigation of a complaint, you have to identify yourself. That's state statutes. Okay. Just make sure you're aware of what's going to go down because you won't. I'll let you remain silent. We'll take my turn, President. I'm okay. not answering further questions. Okay. I will advise you guys that you're in violation of civil rights. Uh, Absolutely not. I will let you cautionally, uh, cautionally supersede this one. Okay. Put on notice. We're not. We're in. He said you've been put on notice. He said he said we're not. <laughs> what? Yeah, man. If y'all want to check this out, it's on a Crime Watch page. Under when three uh, correct cop, uh, corrupt cops uh, got caught. <laughs>